Okay, welcome back. Uh, looks like my screen capture software that came with my computer can only do 10 minutes at a time, so I guess I'll do this in 10 minute increments. So as I was saying before, uh, we need to make sure that we multiply, add these little asterisks in, and then if you're not familiar with MATLAB, one other thing I want to point out is that there's this dot multiply. Angle of attack, or AOA, as we defined right here, is a matrix. This matrix is 85 doubles, or no, no what did I say? Double, 85. It's 85 rows by 18 columns, and we're choosing one of these columns and defining this as angle of attack. So it's actually one column, 85 rows. Same with X. X is the same thing. It's one uh, column, 85 rows. If you know anything about multiplying matrices together, you cannot multiply uh, a matrix that's one column 85 rows times the same thing it just doesn't work you have to actually have to do one column 85 rows times 85 rows one column for it to actually work so this dot actually tells MATLAB to treat these all as scalars which is the same it's also the same thing as just uh, taking this X and multiplying it taking this X matrix and multiplying it by the transpose of this so that's all just technical stuff so oh, what happened so just forget I said that or don't forget I said that, up to you. So, next what we want to do is we want to do the same thing for the moments because moments are important in longitudinal stability and lateral stability and all stability because if there's a moment it will cause your aircraft to pitch down and up. So let's go ahead and grab the moment. So let's define M S as our moment. This is equal to data matrix. Same thing, HDR dot Oops, I forgot a comma. It's the same thing as what we did before. So, uh, comma, hdr, dot, and then we'll just go ahead and we'll find the moment here. So, what we actually want is we want the transverse moment. Uh, transverse moment is the one we'll use for longitudinal stability. It'll be a different one for a different type of stability. We're just going to do long longitudinal for now. So, for moments, like likewise we have to do the same sort of uh, coordinate transform but it's not quite as simple for moments so what we gotta do is we actually have to uh, transpose the moment on the sting which is recorded by this MS value and we need to transpose it onto the center of gravity of the aircraft so what that is is that's it's simply this moment plus the sum of the f uh, plus each force times its moment arm or the distance away from it so you'll just have to trust me on this one over here because you weren't physically there and you don't know where the sting was mounted in relation to the uh, to this to the center of gravity of the aircraft so just trust me on this uh, just take it as the truth so the moment about the center of gravity is equal to this MS value plus some value, we'll call it ZCG, we'll define that in a minute, times X. So that's just going to be this X value right here multiplied at a distance ZCG and that's just a geometric, or a geometry dis or geometric distance away from this, the two things that are away from each other. Likewise, we'll do it for the next other one. So that's actually equal to minus XCG because the way the sting was mounted is it just so happened to be before or after, I forgot what it was. It was before before the center of gravity. So that's equal, likewise, that's equal to this expression right here. So we'll actually go ahead, before MATLAB yells at us, we'll actually go ahead and derive these. So ZCG, trust me, it is equal to 0 0.05 meters. So it was 5 centimeters away from the center of gravity below it is what the z direction is so it was just mounted five centimeters below the center of gravity which makes sense because the sting was or I don't know if it wouldn't make I don't know if it makes sense to you but to me it does because I physically mounted the sting below the aircraft but now that you know I mounted it below the aircraft it should also make sense uh, enough of that rant so the next one is the other distance the uh, x direction away so we know the x direction xcg that is equal to 0. Point, or it's actually equal to negative 0. 0.016 it was 1.6 centimeters away from the center of gravity is what that says that's in meters once again so there we go 
we got our moment. Just kind of trust me on that one, that that is what the center of gravity is, or the moment about the center of gravity, based on the geometry that I mounted the sting at. So, next one, we'll go ahead and define the velocity. The velocity is equal to, I'll just quickly do this because you've seen it a bunch of times, it's equal to the data matrix, colon, HDR, and this is actually the air speed. There we go. And I'm actually going to go ahead and copy and paste this because what we want to do next is we want to do the density. And density is commonly done by row. And we'll just go ahead and replace these with air density. There we go. We got everything we need. So next what we got to do is we have to start defining some variables for us to graph. The most common one you've probably seen if you have any sort of interest in aircraft and actually try to look at some of this some of the graphs is the coefficient of lift and the coefficient of drag and plotting those versus the angle of attack so what is the coefficient of lift well coefficient of lift which is we'll just denote as CL it's equal to the lift divided by the dynamic pressure which we'll denote as Q times the surface area of the wing which is SW so that is the definition of the coefficient of lift. So it takes the lift and it kind of normalizes it by dividing it by the geometry of the wing to get a dimensionless figure that can actually be applied to from a model to a, a bigger aircraft. The only thing is it just you have to have the geometry has to add up so it, you can get those values. It's kind of like it's a dimensionless figure. Kind of like I don't know if you're familiar with Reynolds numbers or what other dimensionless numbers are there. Or it's kind of like you know scale model. Like if you have like a one fifth size scale model, that means that every aspect geometrically has to be one fifth the size. You can't just scale it down in one direction and not the other direction. It doesn't work like that. So that's what the coefficient of lift is. It's just a dimensionless figure that's useful in a lot of other things, and that's why that's why we'll, we'll use it because it's useful in other things. And we'll get to those in just a bit we actually start deriving these equations, stability equations, but for now I just want to show you graphically what this all looks like. So that's what the coefficient of lift is. So we have L, and so all we need now is we need Q, the dynamic pressure. If you've taken any sort of fluids classes, you know Q is equal to 1 half rho V squared. That's all the dynamic pressure is. It also comes from Bernoulli's equation. That's in there. It's in there somewhere. So we'll just go ahead and write that out. So it's 0.5 times rho, which conveniently I defined right above. So we actually have to do these dot multiplies again. I guess when in doubt, just dot multiply everything in MATLAB, unless you're actually trying to multiply matrices together, because it doesn't seem to hurt anything in my past experience. So we'll go ahead and just define this V squared. Once again, I believe I need a dot there. So that's what our Q is. And from the geometry of the airplane, which I should probably post somewhere, I'll post all the relevant datas or data. The surface area of the wing is the mini ultra stick. I'll show you a picture real quick again, once again. Here's the mini ultra stick. If you can kind of see, uh, there, that's not much zoomed in, but it's actually kind of a trapezoidal shape. So we just, I'll, I'll give you the actual area of it. So, it's actually a trapezoid, so the area of a trapezoid is SW equals, so it's actually one half times the length or the span. So it, it's in this case, it's actually 0 0.2129 meters. So that's the span, so 21.9 centimeters times the uh, uh, times this distance right over here. And we'll, to get that, you just average it. So that's what that 0.5 comes from. So I should actually probably write it this way. It'll be a little more clear. So I'll write a multiplication sign. So this is this will just be the average uh, width of the wing, or not width, the average cord length of the wing. So just take my word on this. It is 0.985 for the trailing edge and 0 0.9 for the leading edge. Actually, no, it's the other way around. It gets uh, thicker towards the back. So that's just simply how to find the area of a trapezoid.
given the data 